As we scroll through the rubrics of our repertory and the paragraphs in the Materia Medica, remedy after remedy, we hear very similar symptoms and often get a little confused. Which is the symptom I must take to prescribe the remedy? I'm here to share a trick based on science to solve this problem. How should you recognize whether a rubric is important or not, and whether it is a correct rubric or not? Let me take the example of a lesser fruit and less used remedy, because here is where the problem often happens. Tellurium, the metal tellurium. When we look at the proving symptoms, repertory, and materia medica, you will see many common symptoms, crawling on the skin, headaches, skin eruptions, pains, worse noon, better eating, etc., etc. Then you would read odor, fish brine, odor, garlicky. And now, I and you would say, well, this at least is a specific symptom. It's not common, must be important. But then the question is, would I consider the garlicky the key aspect of the remedy or the fish prime? As I move forward, there's eruptions. Eruptions reddish, eruptions bluish. And I say, well, I know definitely bluish is a more uncommon symptom. It must be the right one. But then it's a lesser proved remedy. Just one prover probably said bluish. Can I actually, you know, stake my patient's health on that one symptom of a one prover? How do I know this is correct? And then you would read eruptions, ringworm, fungal eruptions, most important remedy for it. How do I know? Which of it is really characteristic? And here I would look at the source of our substance. Tellurium, the substance. So we heard the proving language. Now let's hear the language of the substance. And as I open Wikipedia, you would read that tellurium gives off a garlicky odor. For in the human being, it forms dimethyl telluride, which has a garlic odor. Interesting. If I read the proving of tellurium, which has been done by Herring, Clark describes the prover had to sit far away from people because of this garlicky odor coming from him. Aha! Here's a symptom in the repertory but very well corroborated specifically in the proving and it is a characteristic of the substance itself. They recognize tellurium poisoning in human beings with this kind of a garlicky odor. Then I look at the next step and I say, bluish eruptions, reddish eruptions, is this bluish just a wrong symptom or is it a genuinely peculiar symptom? Now, we've all studied chemistry. How do we recognize metals? By the color of their flame. And as I read through further, tellurium burns with a blue flame forming tellurium oxide. Aha! I now know this bluish discoloration is a unique specific symptom of tellurium. I'm also seeing here how the proving and the characteristic properties of the substance are running parallel to each other. Look at the third one. The symptomatology clinical and proving indicates that tellurium is a superb remedy for ringworm infections, a fungal infection, circular in form. What does this have to do with tellurium? 
without looking for the fungus as I read through the Wikipedia or chemistry of the substance, it's biology in the human being. It doesn't have any biological use in the human being, but fungi use it instead of sulfur and selenium to form their amino acids and therefore their proteins. Aha, therefore, tellurium is something that can cause growth of the fungi, something that they can absorb and use unlike the human being. And therefore, if I look at my Materia Medica and the proving, I see these three characteristic symptoms therefore will stand out. The garlicky odor, the bluish discoloration, and the fungal infections totally running in parallel with the substance characteristic. Let's look at another example. We know that peculiar symptoms, characteristic symptoms are most important. Now, sometimes we get these really characteristic symptoms in the materia medica, in the repertory, and it's very exciting. And then we keep waiting for this patient to come to give us this weird characteristic symptom. And we are waiting and waiting and waiting. For example, I'm just being, the symptom described is headache as if his feet are in his head. Wow. Man, headache as if his feet are in his head. Just let one patient, dear God, come and give me this symptom. My life will be made. But they don't come. Is this symptom important? Is it just some something one patient, one prover said and should have been discarded? from the Materia Medica, what do I do? Let's look at the substance. If this is such a peculiar symptom, as we know it is, then, and if it is significant in the remedy, is it significant as a characteristic of the substance? What is Amphisbena? Amphisbena is a snake-like lizard from the reptile family. In other words, it's a lizard without legs and hence moves like a snake. But it has a unique property. It can move from both ends, which means if this is your snake-like lizard, this is so-called its head, it can move in this direction, but it can also move with this direction, which means its head can become the tail and the tail can become the head. Now, when I look at this symptom and I look at the meaning of this symptom, it means the feet are in the head. And now this symptom makes complete sense in context to the substance. Therefore, it is a symptom of this substance. Let me look at the other symptoms here. Vertigo first moves on to one side and then on to the other side. Aha! Now this is making even more sense. Therefore, I don't need to wait for a patient to come and tell me my feet are in the head. I understand what this means in context to the substance. It can move both directions. The head and the feet are interchangeable. So when I apply it to a human context, it can have pains running upwards and downwards. It can be a person who takes an action and moves in one direction of his life and then turns around and moves exactly in the opposite direction. The giddiness falls on one side and then falls on the other side. Therefore, understanding and relating this peculiar symptom to the very substance itself directly 
You see, this is not making up a story. Here is a direct correlation. Will tell us how to pick the peculiar symptom from the substance, but be able to apply it in the cases. How does this source of the simulum now become part of a person's life? How does it become the patient's remedy? This is another interesting question that we've all thought of. At the time of Hahnemann, there were no answers. We didn't know enough about the human behavior, the human brain, but today we do. Today we know how this substance becomes incorporated in a patient's being so that his behavior, his symptoms are a reflection of that substance and its proving. 